mentor. And he said, I'm going to give you, we say it all the time, I'm going to give you wells that you did not dig. I'm going to give you vineyards that you didn't have you to plant. All you have to do is go and pick the fruit. As, as I allow it to rain, as I allow, you know, your blessings to come forth, pick the fruit, and when you pick the fruit, share with somebody else. I need you to bind it. I need you to bind the word. I want you to teach that word. I want you to bind it. Bind it. Bind it on your frontlets. He says, thou shalt bind them for a sign. Because remember, they did not have Bibles. They didn't have, you know, all translations like we did. They didn't, I mean, like we do. They, 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 didn't, they, didn't, they didn't have that. He said, I want you to bind them for a sign upon thy hand. They had to write them in their hands. He said, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them on the post of thy house and on the gates so that you will remember my words. And so he says, when you teach those children, teach them diligently. Teach them. Don't let your children just do in and everything. Children, you've got to obey your parents. I don't care who you hang with and I don't care who your friends are and I don't care how popular they are. I'm telling you, it's best to obey your parents. Amen? And he says, teach it diligently to thy children. And thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. You've got, to, you've got to meet the requirements. You can't be shallow. You can't just, you know, get a little bit from here, you know, from here or there, but you've got to envelop yourself in the, meeting the requirements. Meeting the requirements of God. Amen? And so he told them, I'm going to bless you, but I need you to meet some of these requirements. Amen? Amen. And then he told them that if you are obedient, you will be able to eat the good of the land. I'm telling you, in these last and evil days, I believe God's church is going to eat the good of the land. I believe, as he told the children of Israel, if you meet the requirements that I put out there for you. If you be obedient to the word of the Lord, I will open up the windows of heaven. I will pour you out of a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. And when I bless you and when I strengthen you, I want you to go strengthen the brethren I don't bless you to keep everything all to yourself because all of it belonged to me anyway. But I bless you that you might be able to bless others. I bless you that you might be able to share with others. I bless you that all nations will see that I am your God. And when you keep my requirements, you can ask what you will. If you live right and walk up right before God, ask what you will, and I will give it to you. Just believe that I am your God, and I know how to work it out in your life. So we must stop doubting God. Get in the word of God. Do what the word of the Lord told us. I know this isn't a shouting message, but I'm intentionally set out now so that we can make heaven. I believe somebody's going to miss heaven. I believe somebody's going to miss heaven because they are not meeting the requirements that God told them to meet. It's not only in Deuteronomy 6, 10, but it's all through scripture. The Bible says a man must be born again before he can enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, I know conversion is one thing, but I know the scripture says you must be born again. That is a requirement. I'm not going to fight with theological persuasions, but I know that I needed to be changed from the inside out. I know I needed transformation in my life. I know that I needed the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
I really know now that I must meet the requirements of God. You can't get around it. I don't care where you go. David said, if I make my bed in hell, you're there. If I move to the uttermost parts of heaven, you're there. There's nowhere I can go, Lord, that you are not there. As a matter of fact, in the book of Chronicles, the Bible says the eyes of the Lord run to and fro in all the earth, working in behalf of those who walk upright before him and their heart is all right. So I'm here to tell you, as we start, I feel like running. As we start 20, as we start a new convocational year, we must meet God's requirements. And if we meet God's requirements, I'm here to tell you, I don't have a rabbit's foot or a cabbage, a leaf in my head. I'm here to tell you, according to the word of the Lord, if we meet God's requirements, he will fill your houses with good things. He'll touch you and redeem you from the things that plague your mind and your heart. If we meet God's requirements, Lord, have mercy. Get that word deep on the inside so that when we're challenged, we'll know how to get that word with the devil's head and get him off of our back. We've got to meet the requirement. He said, love not only him, but love your neighbor as thyself. Some of us are not in love with our neighbor. No, 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 we're not. I can see it real clear. No, 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 we're not. But he said, love thy neighbor as thyself. I believe some of us have a problem loving ourselves. And that's why we have a problem loving our neighbor. Because we're wounded, broken, beaten, torn down, cast out, confused, weary, don't know where to go. And we think everybody else is the same. No, we're not. No, we're not. Meet his requirements. He'll give you joy. He'll give you happiness. He'll give you love life. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will meet his requirements. Do good. Love him. Stay in his word. Lord, have mercy. It's a whole list of requirements. Whole list. 27, 28, 29, blessings and curses in Deuteronomy. Yeah. See, see, we just read the word. I don't think we really believe it. I, I don't think we really believe it. We, we don't. We don't. I don't think we really believe it. I believe it. I believe it. But we've got to meet the requirements. I don't want to get into all the stuff that you shouldn't do because you know you shouldn't do it. Yeah, because the scripture, you know, one thing he told Israel, you know, you, you know, in the book of Romans, you already know what's right. You know what's wrong. You already know. And so, so you know what's wrong. And so he's just given us a chance to correct it. And he's given us a chance to meet the requirements. Because he said, I just really want to save you. I just want to love you. I just want to take care of you. That's all I want to do. I just want to be your God. I just want to take good care of you. That's what I want to do. I, I, want, I, you know, I want you to know that, you know, there is nothing impossible for me. I want you to know that. Nothing's impossible. We have witnesses all in the house. You know, when we meet his requirements, when the doctors say one thing, God said, not so. When the bank say one thing, God says, not so. How many he tried to take your life through sickness and illness? And God said, not so. Yes, 
because they're meeting my requirements. They're trusting me while they're going through. We must be intentional about meeting his requirements. Stop letting the enemy trick you and set you up and take your blessings away from you. The Bible says you must be saved. You must be. Oh, my goodness. I preached a message, protective custody. He has me in protective custody because I don't know how to keep myself. I don't have good sense enough to keep myself. So he has me under protective custody. Might need to put some more of us under protective custody. Save us from ourselves. I'm here to tell you, God wants your life to turn around so he can give you exactly what you need. I'm here to tell you, I'm 